BGCSE as well as, you know, just generally working questions. Yeah, answer from A is going to have an effect on the answer in B and then C and then D, which is why it's very, very important to ensure that you check over your work and make sure you're doing everything correctly before you proceed. And as you get further down in the question, it's still important to go back and check. Checking your working, checking your answers, all of that is a very important and very essential skills. Because like was said in the Q&A section, if you get question A wrong, chances are, not chances are, you are going to get B, C, and D incorrect as well. All right. So again, my answer for A was $270. The answer for B was $750. And then C, $1125. And finally, D, eight hours. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give you three questions to look at. And that's how we're going to wrap up this session. You'll work on these three questions, and then I'll share the answer towards the end. So let's go there to those three questions. During that time, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the Q&A section. I'm going to skip through this. Here are your practice problems. Three persons, Marsha, Mrs. Joseph, and Mr. Rowell. Take some time to work through these questions. I am going to give you about 10 minutes. And then we'll share the answers and discuss together. If you have any questions, I'll be in the Q&A in the chat section along with Mr. Tink and Mrs. Brown Hall to answer whatever questions you may have. Try not to post the answers until we actually get to working through the question so that everyone has an opportunity to work the question. Again, thank you so much to my panelists for posting the working in the chat so that you still have those as a reference as needed. And again, we see that double time question coming up for overtime. Remember, double time just means times two. We're going to double the amount of money you make for your overtime. However, these questions, what I like about wages and salaries, they all, for the most part, follow the same format. It's all the same. We know double time is times two. Triple time now is going to be times three. And then question three is a salary question. There, we didn't work on an example like it, but I put it out there to see how students would handle the question. It requires you to remember how many months are in a year and so forth.
So you have about five more minutes. Try to get through as many of it as you can. Next session, Friday, which is the last day of the week. What I want to do is look at questions that come directly from the BGCSE on wages and salaries. Someone's asking, what's the difference between overtime rates and the wage? Are they the same? Well, we know, I'm not sure where your question comes from if you want to clarify, but I'll just speak to the fact that the basic wage is what I, I make for my regularly scheduled hours. Um, overtime wage is going to be how much I make in total for working overtime. So my overtime rates is how much I get paid for one hour of overtime, whereas my overtime pay or my overtime, yeah, my overtime pay is how much I get paid in total for all of the overtime hours I worked. So let's say my overtime rate is eleven twenty-five, and I work 10 hours. Um, please hold off on posting your answers just yet so that everyone has a chance. But like I was saying, my overtime rate, let's say I get paid eleven twenty-five per hour of overtime, that my overtime pay is going to be, let's say 11.25 times 10 if I work 10 hours. You have just over three minutes left, and then we're going to share our answers and go through, go through them. And when I say go through them, I'm just going to briefly discuss the answers already posted, so I'll just share them with you. Um, yes, Caitlin, so we are going to go through the answers at the end, if that helps. Also, my PowerPoint, this whole video is going to be made available to you, perhaps at the end of the week, maybe tomorrow, where you can go through the slides and work at your own pace with all of the working provided. Also tomorrow, we're going to look at BGCSE questions, so you're going to get more practice on this topic. All right, so in these last 60 seconds, if you've completed question one, can you post your answers only for question one in the Q&A section, please? All right, so we can already start to compare and see what a few persons got. So go ahead and post all of the answers for question one, not just A. You feel free to post A, B, and C one time. And we're going to look at the answer key and see if that's what, what my answer key has. All right. So waiting on a few more responses. Okay, so let's look at question one. Here's what I got. For question A, 
Well, one says, Marsha, a secretary works a 40-hour week at $8 per hour. Calculate her basic wage. Most persons answered correctly at $320. Then, question B, she also works six hours overtime on Saturday at double time, which means you needed to multiply her regular rate by two to get 16, and then multiply that by six to get 96, which I see a good bit of persons got also. Then question C, calculate her gross pay for the week. We added her basic wage to her overtime pay to get $416. So if you got those, go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back. You did a good job. All right, go ahead and post your answers to question two now, please. If you can, if possible, can you delete your, or maybe I could do it. Right now, you're posting your answers to question two. So I see one response so far. And again, do remember that these PowerPoints will be made available to you so that you're able to work at them at your own pace. And in receiving the, well, you're gonna get the lesson. And in receiving the lesson, you're going to have my tutorial as well as my working that's been posted on the screen. Gabrielle, I hope I'm saying that correctly. What is it that you need me to go back to? Go back to the question for number two. All right, here's the question for number two. I'm just going to give it another second or so, another few seconds so more persons can share their answers in the Q&A before we move on. And it's interesting to note that I'm seeing different answers. So once I do post the response, make sure you make any corrections where necessary. Question two was a bit of a tricky one because the overtime pay was calculated at different rates for different days. But I wanted to see who could handle it and see if you knew what was the correct steps to take to answer it. So let's go ahead and look at the answer. All right, so Mrs. Joseph, a seamstress, works a 38-hour week for which she's paid $266. During the carnival season, she works six hours overtime. Oh, I made a mistake. She works six hours on overtime at double time and two hours overtime on Sunday at triple time. So A, her basic pay was 266 divided by 38 to give her seven dollars. I'm going to change my Saturday information. Saturday her rate was let me add a tax box over it. Her pay rate was seven dollars. Seven dollars. Seven dollars times two since it was double time to give her $14 per hour. And so in total, since she worked six hours on Saturday, her Saturday pay was equal to six times 14, which is a total of $84. $84, which means in total, her gross pay let me 
me select this and move it over. So the blue is the correct working. That's what it should say. And then in total, her gross pay should have been 266 plus 84 plus 42. So in total, she would have made for that time period $392. $392. So the corrected answer is in blue. And if you got it, you obviously beat the teacher. <laughs> and let's finally look at question three. Question three, post your answers. I'm going to go ahead and put it back up. Question three right here. Please post your answers in the Q&A section for question three. I'm going to work them as you post. It says, Mr. Roll is an, a lawyer with a gross annual salary of $144,000. Every month, $248 for national insurance, $139.17 for pension, and $3,000 for alimony is deducted from his salary. Calculate A, his gross monthly salary, B, his total monthly deductions, and then C, what Mr. Roll, Roll's net monthly payment. What is Mr. Roll's net monthly payment? Let me check quickly to see if I put that slide in here. All right, here are the correct responses. And again, if you got them, go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back. Since he made 144,000 for the entire year, and a year has 12 months, we know that for each month, if we divide, we find that he made $12,000. Then I added up his total monthly deductions, national insurance, pension, and alimony together to find that in total, $3,387.17 was deducted from his pay. And to find his net pay, I take his gross pay and subtract the total monthly deductions. Hopefully everyone would have gotten that. And that's going to bring our lesson just about to an end. Today we'll be looking at the BGCSE English language papers. My name is Wendy Bo, and I will help you to get to know the papers. So welcome, let's start on our journey. Can you tell me how many papers there are? There are actually four language papers. Let's look at each one of those papers a little bit more closely. There is first paper one, the continuous writing paper. Paper two, our oral comprehension. Paper three, the written comprehension and directed writing paper. And paper four, the extended comprehension and directed writing paper. In order to get at least a C grade, you must take papers one, two, and three. These are our core papers. To miss any of these papers will result in an X grade. In order to obtain an A or B grade, you must take the paper four, which is our extended paper. Let's get to know paper one, the continuous writing paper. Most people do not like this paper, but it is of very great importance. 
For this paper, you will be given one hour and 10 minutes to complete it. Additionally, you are expected to write 350 to 500 words. It requires some planning. Additionally, it is worth 40 marks of the entire exam. And finally, your language, your expression of ideas, and your grammar are of key importance, so you must pay attention to those. The first 10 minutes of this exam will be used to read through each question and decide on which question it is that you are going to respond to. You will also use some of this time for planning, which means that you will jot down any important information, any relevant details, any main ideas that you wish to use to help with the development of your essay. You will be asked to write your response to the essay question in the answer booklet that will be provided for you and you will be asked to write a composition or an essay based on one of the topics that will be given to you. You are not to write on more than one topic. You should write anywhere between 350 to 500 words. To write less will mean that you will have an underdeveloped essay. You should pay attention to punctuation, spelling, and handwriting so that your ideas are expressed clearly and your examiner is able to read through them and understand them. No dictionaries are permitted in the exam. Therefore, you should study and review all vocabulary that you have been taught by your teacher. This exam is worth 40% of the marks of the entire paper. And it is paper one that will be used in conjunction with paper four to determine whether or not you will receive that A or B grade. It is imperative, therefore, that you clearly express your ideas and avoid any grammatical or sentence structure or any language errors throughout your writing. There are eight questions on paper one. These questions will address the four modes of writing that you have studied over the years. So you may find questions that are related to narrative writing or descriptive writing or expository writing or persuasive writing. You must be able to employ all of the techniques that are associated with each mode of writing. You will find in this exam that there is a poetry prompt. You can decide to write using any of the four modes of writing to best convey your ideas about this poetry prompt. The final question of paper one is usually the picture prompt. The last question is the picture prompt question. You will find two pictures Whatever you write must be based on the images and the ideas conveyed in the picture. Now, let us look at paper two, the oral comprehension. In this paper, you will be given one hour and 15 minutes for its completion. It is worth 15 marks. It requires careful and critical listening skills. You will be required to take notes. It requires attention to speakers' techniques. I will point out here that although this is paper two, this will be the first paper that you sit for the English language exam. This paper is also known as the oral comprehension paper. You will be given one hour and 15 minutes for its completion. For this exam, all information and the passage will be played on a recording, so you are to listen attentively. The recording will be played twice. That is important to know. During the first playing, however, you will simply listen for the general impression of what is being said, and you will make mental note of the main ideas and any relevant or important information. At the end of the first recording, you will be given an opportunity to take notes. There is a note section that will be provided to you. In the note section, you will find subheadings that will help to guide you as you listen during the second recording. During the second recording, you will be allowed to take notes as you listen, and then you will be given 45 minutes to respond to the questions that follow. There are two parts to the oral comprehension. Part one is the note section. In this section, you will find subheadings that will help to guide you and help you to organize all of the information that you would have heard during the recording. You will pay attention to these subheadings and you will jot down any information that is related to them. This does not mean, however, that you 
are not allowed to make any additional notes or that you are unable to use information that is not highlighted in the subheadings here in the notes section. Along the margins, you can write any information that seems important. One of the things that I would want to point out here is that you should provide some kind of example for any idea that you write in your notes section. You may need it later on. At the end of the notes section, the recording will direct you to the second part of this exam. It is here that you will find the questions to be answered. As you read through the questions, you will refer to your notes. You will also pay attention to the task and keywords that are provided in each question. Remember, these help to guide you and to help you to give accurate information. In addition, you're going to pay attention to the number of points at the end of each question. These are important because these direct you as to how many answers you are to provide for each question. If you pay attention to them, you can get the maximum amount of points needed for this paper. The final question for the oral comprehension is usually a technique question. You will probably be asked to pay attention to some technique that you have seen in writing or that you have been hearing as you've been practicing the oral comprehension. Now, let us look at paper three. It is the written comprehension and directed writing paper. For this paper, you will be given two hours and 10 minutes for its completion. It is worth 45 marks. It requires careful and critical reading. It requires use of a variety of writing styles, summary writing, and accurate language. And finally, you will be required to re-express ideas in your own words. This paper is also known as the Written Comprehension and Directed Writing Paper. You will be given two hours and 10 minutes for this exam. The first 10 minutes will be used for your reading time. It is at this time you will become acquainted with the content of the passage. You do need that content to respond efficiently and effectively to the questions. You are to answer all questions in the answer booklet that will be provided. You are not to answer the multiple choice questions in the question booklet. Write your multiple choice question answers in the answer booklet that has been provided for you. Remember to number your answers clearly. There are two sections to paper three. The first section contains the passage. Once you've completed reading, you will now move to the question section. There are multiple choice questions, short answer questions, and summary writing questions. You must pay attention to keywords and key expressions as well as task words. These will assist you with understanding what the question is asking you to do, and then you will be able to respond to the question in an effective and accurate way. Another important note is to pay attention to the number of points at the end of each question. This is going to be of utmost importance because it will help you to determine how many answers you should give for each question. When you get to the summary writing question, look for a word count. Look for a paragraphing. Once you see these, you will know that you are to write a continuous piece of writing that should include a very brief topic sentence and a concluding sentence and that you should be using transitions effectively. This question is usually worth 10 points and it is for this question that you will begin to pay attention specifically to your expression and to your language. You are going to write as clearly and as precisely as you possibly can. Finally, you will arrive at section B. It is in section B that you will find the directed writing question. Usually the instructions are very specific and clear as to what you should be doing for this question. For this directed writing question, you will be asked to use a specific type or form of writing. You will be asked to write either a speech or a tribute or a letter to the editor or a formal letter. Whichever form of writing is asked of you, you are to use the information from the passage that you have read. 
in order for you to be able to obtain the maximum amount of points, you will have to employ your inference and drawing conclusion skills. In addition, you will be using your summary writing skills. You will be asked to use no more than 400 words. Again, pay attention to the task of the question. Sometimes directed writing questions can have more than one part. So it is imperative that you pay attention to all parts of the question. This will ensure that you get the maximum amount of points. Now let us look at our final paper, paper four, which is the extended comprehension and directed writing paper. This is the paper that you have been given two hours and 30 minutes to complete. It is worth 52 marks. It requires also careful and critical reading. You will be required to use a variety of writing styles, summary and accurate language. Also, it will require you to re-express ideas in your own words. In previous years, candidates were given two hours and 10 minutes as is highlighted here in our sample. Since 2019, candidates have been given an additional 20 minutes for the completion of this exam. You will now have two hours and 30 minutes to complete it. 10 minutes will be used for reading time. All answers are to be written in the answer booklet that will be provided. For paper four, there are two sections. Section A is the first section and it will contain the first of two passages to be read for this exam. At the end of this first passage, you will find two questions. Question one, which is the summary question, as you can see here by the number of words that are to be used. And then you will have question two, which is the technique question. I would admonish you to read through each question and pay attention to the task and keywords in order to determine what it is that you should do with each question. The answers for these questions can only be obtained from the first passage. You are not allowed to use information from the second passage to respond to the questions one and two of section A. Section B contains the second passage of paper four. At the end of the passage, you will find the final two questions for this exam. You must adhere to the word limit of all of the questions of this exam. It showcases your ability to summarize ideas. This is a very important skill. Finally, for question number four, you have the directed writing question, which is similar to the directed writing question on paper three. For question four of the paper four exam, you will be allowed to use information from both passages. So do take advantage of both passages to respond to this question and try to obtain the maximum amount of content points. Welcome back today for an exciting grammar lesson with Mistress Anika Gibson. Our lesson is on the topic adverbs. Do you know what an adverb is? Before we begin, let's recap last week's lesson. Last week's lesson was on the topic comparative and superlative adjectives. Does anyone remember what are comparative and superlative adjectives? Let's have a quick review. Yes, comparative adjectives. It compares two things. The suffix er is added at the end of the adjective. In the example, my mother is older than my father. Notice the underlying comparative adjective older. Let's have a look at superlative adjectives. It compares more than two things. The suffix est is added at the end of the adjective. Let's read the example together. My father is the oldest child. Notice in that sentence, oldest have the suffix est added at the end. 
So let's continue with our lesson for today. What is it that we'll be learning? Number one, explain what is an adverb. Read number two for me. Super job. Now let's have a look. What are adverbs? An adverb tells more about a verb. Can you read that again for me? Great job. Adverbs can do four things. One of them being, they tell how an action happens. What does it tell? How an action happens. Let's have a look at an example. The girl is happily walking down the street. Notice in that sentence, the verb walking is underlined. Now, how is the girl walking? If you said happily, you are correct. Good job. Now, here are some examples of more adverbs that tell how. Let's read them together. Suddenly, quickly, patiently, quietly, slowly, fastly, silently, and softly. Number two. Adverbs also tell when the action happened. What number two says? Yes, it also tells when the action happened. Let's look at this example. Can you read for me, please? Yes. Early in the morning, we went to junk canoe. Now, in that sentence, the verb is went. When did we went to junk canoe? If you said early, awesome. below are some more adverbs that tell when. Let's read them together. Never, soon, daily, tomorrow, early, later, now, and yesterday. Number three, adverbs tell where an action happens. In the sentence below, the boys went outside to play marbles. Where did the action happen? If you sat outside, you are correct. Super job, boys and girls. Here are a few more examples that tell where. Nowhere, inside, outside, there, here, abroad, somewhere, away, and home. So these are more examples of adverbs that tell where. Number four, adverbs also tell to what extent an action happened. Let's read this sentence together. He is 
extremely tall for his age. In this sentence, we have where the adjective tall is being modified. And so in this sentence, the word extremely is the adverb. Let's read these other adverbs that tell to what extent together. The first word, very, to, no, not quiet. Try again, boys and girls. Very good. The word is quite. Rather, extremely, terribly, and really. So now, boys and girls, it's time for practice. Let's see if we can identify the adverb in this sentence. But before we do, I will read the sentence for you. The dog patiently waited for his owner. What is the adverb in that sentence? If you said patiently, awesome. Let's try another one. Yesterday, we went on a picnic at Goodman's Bay Beach. What is the adverb in this sentence? If you said yesterday, you were right on. Keep it up, boys and girls. In this practice, we're trying to find out what type of adverb is used in the sentence. Notice that the adverb is underlined. Let's read the sentence together. The coronavirus kept us inside our home. What does inside tell us? Does it tell us where? Does it answer when? Does it tell us how? Or does it say to what extent? If you said where, you were absolutely correct. Next sentence. It is now time to wash our clothes at Superwash. The underlying word is now. Very good. Now, what does now tell us? Does it tell us where, when, how, or to what extent? Very good, fantastic job, boys and girls. I think you got it now. It's now time to recap our lesson. Can someone tell me what is an adverb? Yes, an adverb is a word that tells more about a verb. Now, I came up with a little chant here for us to remember about adverbs. I need someone to drop me a beat. Let's go. Adverbs can tell how, adverbs can tell when, adverbs can tell where and to what and extent. Yeah, adverbs can tell how, adverbs can tell when, adverbs can tell where and to what and extent. Yay, awesome job boys and girls. Now join me this time. Everybody let's go. Adverbs can tell how, adverbs can tell when, adverbs can tell where and to what extent. Adverbs can tell how, adverbs can tell when, adverbs can tell where and to what extent. Yay! Thanks for joining me today, boys and girls. And remember, practice makes perfect. Until next time, see you guys!